Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. As you can see, it is Sunday, May the 6th, and I have been given a presentation by the Holy Spirit a few months ago, which I first introduced to my family in worship. But the Holy Spirit has been egging me on to produce this particular presentation and share it to anyone out there who is willing to listen. I've given the title of this particular presentation Filthy Rags. Now we could also refer to this as Who Gets to Pay? Isaiah 64 verse 6 But we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags and we do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Now it has been in recent decades revealed to us that the filthy rags referred to here are in fact the used menstrual rags of a woman. And the general point behind those purveying such a view is the ickiness or the grossness of these particular items. And without getting away from that particular aspect there is another very important reason why we can focus on the filthy rag part of it and in fact we should probably focus on the blood part of it. Now When we come to the aspect of sin itself, God said, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So in other words, as far as sin is concerned, death or the shedding of blood by the perpetrator, <laughs> their own that is, is payment for the sin concerned. So we have to ask ourselves, what is sin? Well, sin here is the creation of a debt by the sinner, by sinning, which must be paid to God. Now who can pay? Well I would suggest that humans certainly cannot pay because in the context of the Bible the human or man is a sinner. The sacrifice that he can offer is sinful blood which makes him automatically unsuitable as a potential payee of the debt. So can men pay? Well not the men that we know. What about angels? They live a perfect life don't they? There's only one problem. Angels do not have human blood. They have angel blood. Therefore, they cannot pay the debt of sin. Well, what about God? Well, you have the same kind of problem here. God himself, in a strict sense, cannot pay the debt. He made man, he is not 
man? What about God man? And this is where we find our answer. The God man is the perfect solution. The God man as God is infinite. So when he gets to pay the debt, he pays the debt for all who would receive the gift. As man, he offers human blood. Also acceptable. Because human blood is the only currency by which sin can be paid. Not only that, but it must be living human blood. Now, coming back to the filthy rags, we have to acknowledge that there is human blood on the filthy rags. However, the blood on the human blood on filthy rags is not living blood. It is dead blood. So when we talk about our righteousness being filthy rags, what we are essentially doing is we are trying to offer payment for our debt using fake currency. Dead blood, to all intents and purposes, looks like living blood. I worked on the kill floor of an abattoir for a few months as a young fella and I saw a lot of blood on that floor. I can tell you now that it looked like living blood by virtue of the way it behaved, it gelled, all that kind of thing. But there's no doubt that by the time it was cleaned off the floor it was no longer living blood. It came from an animal that had just been killed. So the blood was still alive, the animal was dead, but obviously outside the animal blood has a very short life. And so the blood we find on the filthy rags is not living blood, it is dead blood, fake currency. And of course there is no government in the world that has a positive view towards their currencies being faked. Now, if this be the case, this means that our efforts to do good deeds to impress God is the equivalent of paying him a fake currency for the sins that we have incurred. And this is why as Adventists we teach that our Deeds, good deeds, cannot be used to pay for our sins. Okay, so how is a debt accounted for? Well, there's only two ways in which a debt can be accounted for. Number one, the debtor pays. So you might owe a bill on the electricity you have consumed for the last three months. Then you are supposed to pay for it. If you choose not to pay for it, then certain things may happen. One of the things that can happen is that the creditor will write off the debt. And what this means is that the creditor takes the hit for the debt that was incurred. Now, as Jesus pointed out in one of his parables, we are in a position where we might be willing to pay, but we are in no position to do so.
And as a consequence, he, God as human pays our debt in our place, but as God, he is obviously taking the hit for the debt that has to be paid. So, when does this debt have to be paid? Does it have to be paid immediately? Does it have to be paid at some time in the future? Is there any other way of postponing the debt? Well, let's look at what happened with uh, Adam and Eve when they decided to sin. We look at Genesis 3.21, which is just after they had committed the sin. And unto Adam and to his wife did the Lord make coats of skin and clothe them. Now, coats of skin would presumably mean that there was an animal, that animal was killed, and the skins of those animals were taken off and given to the couple. What this means is that on the day that Adam and Eve sinned, there was a sacrifice of animals. There was death on the day that Adam and Eve sinned, the death of animals. And if we go through the Old Testament, we see Many, many examples and laws by the, in the books of Moses on how the animals were to be sacrificed and how they were to be dealt with. Now the interesting thing is that God accepts this as payment for sin. So why is God accepting an animal sacrifice as payment for sin? Well, the simple fact of the matter is it is not human blood, it is animal blood, and yet God accepts it. And this can only mean that it is an IOU. This is a recognition by the sinner that they owe God for the sin they have committed and that one day it will be paid for. So we have animal sacrifices simply being IOUs. And were they necessary? Well, we find that they are. If we go to Cain and Abel, they, on one time, were deciding to do a sacrifice for the Lord. It says Abel was a keeper of the sheep but Cain was a tiller of the ground in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord and Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof and the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering but unto Cain and to his offering he hath not respect now we have to ask ourselves why was this the case well, the answer is given in Leviticus. In Leviticus 17 verse 11, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. In other words, there had to be living blood as part of the offer. Fruits and vegetables as offered by Cain had no living blood in them. Therefore, it could not be used as a means of atoning for sin. And unfortunately, we know the outcome of that because Cain was essentially saying, I make the rules, not you, God. And God says, uh-uh, no. Nah, I decide what is acceptable and what is not. And Cain's response was not so much to try and do something against God, although he may have thought he was doing so by 
uh, attacking Abel. Instead, he turns around and attacks his brother. Now, I don't know if it was because he was angry with Abel or if it was because he was angry with God. I suspect it was the latter. We would like to think that maybe there was something uh, going on between Abel and Cain. It is a very common knowledge these days, particularly since the uh, the latest uh, president came to power in the United States, that one of the tactics of those opposed to him is to demonise him and to make out he has all these horrible traits. And this is a very common uh, tactic of those who are opposed to God. It happened to Jesus when he was here on earth. He said, he even told uh, us as Christians, he says, you think you're going to get away with persecution? He says, they're going to, they, per they persecute me. What makes you think that you're going to do any better than me? Anyhow, in conclusion for this section, we find that living human blood is the currency for the payment of sin. Living animal blood is an IOU in place of payment for sin. Plants and fruit have no blood, they cannot be used. The filthy rags blood is dead blood, it cannot be used, it must be living blood. Now let's go back to the animal blood because can we have to ask ourselves, can we find grace? <clears throat> that was, I would better go back to the question first, what was the blood that was used as payment? Well, I guess the simple answer was in the eventual course of time it was human blood. But let's go back to grace. One of the definitions of grace in the Webster Dictionary is an allowance of time granted for a debtor which he is free of at least part of his normal obligations towards the creditor. Now as we've said before, the proper payment for sin is living human blood. But there is no living human blood that could be offered that would be acceptable to God. And so God has given us the IOU system as outlined in the books of Moses. And how long did that go for? Well, we know that it went on for at least 4,000 years. And what this means is that God gave us grace during the Old Testament times that the debt did not have to be settled at that time. There would come a time when the debt would fall due and payment must be made. And that brings us to the question, when was payment for sin made and was it paid on time? <laughs> well, I believe it was and here are a number of reasons. When we go to Daniel 9:24, it says 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy to anoint the most holy. Seventy weeks. Interesting. Now, if we go to Matthew 18, Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. And Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Now, I've heard many ministers and Sabbath school teachers within the church say, well, this just proves that we should keep forgiving everyone forever. 
Well, no, I don't think so. I used to think that way. But then I saw the 70 weeks or the 77s of Daniel 8. And I said to myself, well, okay, this is interesting. Jesus talks about the 70 times 7. And he is talking about he must be possibly talking about the sorry Daniel 9 he must be talking about the the time of Daniel 9 because as anyone knows about that time that was coming very close to its end and so when he referred to the 70 times 7 I believe that he meant that in a literal sense because we identify the ending of that time with the stoning of Stephen so what was happening during each of those years up until the 70 times 7 well there was a day of atonement in which animals were sacrificed this Day of Atonement did not just refer to the individual, the individual's sacrifice for their own sins, but there was a corporate sacrificing for a corporate forgiveness of the nation. So it would seem to me that we not only expect forgiveness at the local level, individual level, but we also see that God forgives at the national level and it's just put a thought into my head I wonder if the 70 times 7 has come about or come very close to being coming about for the nation of the United States it might be very interesting to check that out now the next thing we have to ask ourselves is when did this happen and how do we know that this debt was paid on time well let's read a statement from Ellen White in chapter 78 When the loud cry, It is finished, came from the lips of Christ, the priests were officiating in the temple. It was the hour of the evening sacrifice. The lamb, representing Christ, had been brought to be slain. Clothed in his significant and beautiful dress, the priest stood with lifted knife, as did Abraham when he was about to slay his son. With intense interest, the people were looking on, but the earth trembles and quakes for the Lord himself draws near with a rending noise the inner veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom by an unseen hand throwing open to the gaze of the multitude a place once filled with the presence of God in this place the Shekinah had dwelt here God had manifested his glory above the mercy seat no one but the high priest ever lifted the veil separating this apartment from the rest of the temple. He entered in once a year to make an atonement for the sins of the people. But lo, this veil is rent in twain. The most holy place of the earthly sanctuary is no longer sacred. All is terror and confusion. The priest is about to slay the victim, but the knife drops from his nerveless hand and the lamb escapes. Type has met anti-type in the death of God's Son. The great sacrifice has been made. The way into the holiest is laid open. A new and living way is prepared for all. No longer need sinful, sorrowing humanity await the coming of the high priest. Henceforth, 
the Saviour was to officiate as priest and advocate in the heaven of heavens. It was as the living voice had spoken to the worshippers. There is now an end to all sacrifices and offerings for sin. So given the way all these various events came together, the way that the lamb was able to escape being sacrificed that day, it is very clear that the debt was paid in full and it was paid on time on the day that Jesus was crucified. Okay. So let's take a look at what's happened again. Currency for payment of sin is living blood. In this case, Christ's blood. Because he is human. The animal living blood was an IOU for sin payment. The lamb was able to escape because IOUs for the payment of sin were no longer necessary. The filthy rag blood, as I pointed out before, is dead blood, or if you like, counterfeit currency for the payment of sin. The fruits and vegetables involved no blood at all. So in conclusion, we see that Christ's blood, living blood, human blood, full payment, and on time. And hence, we see the grace is found in the Old Testament by virtue of of animal sacrifices. I'm George Tasker, your judgmental Adventist.
Heaven above.